So Blackstone now owns all the genetic information you send to them if you ever were like, I want to find out where I'm from, Ancestry.com. Man who now wears her brother's face. Manipulating the flow of information, shaping your thoughts, beliefs, and perceptions to serve their own insidious purposes. Welcome back, everyone, to more creepy TikToks, and let's dive in. That is so good. <laughs> that God, so that is the creepiest looking thing I have ever seen. Oh, yeah, he just moved. <gasps> All right, we're not doing this to harm him, just to see if he snaps. Oh, yeah, no, he's alive. Oh, oh, oh my God! Oh, oh my God! God. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to haunt me in my sleep tonight. Can we keep looking to see if we can find a pair of spare underpants? <laughs> <laughs> that was creepy! Only in Australia can you find those weird looking species, but honestly, you have to admit, he looks kind of cute. The next thing I'm going to tell you is unreal, because now we've been offered two and a half thousand pounds to join a scheme for three years. We don't supply you any food. Now listen yeah. to that. We're going to go hungry. Yeah. I am going to plow a field. I'm going to put spring barley in. I am going to get £440 off the government per acre. Per acre okay? That when it comes to crop size, leave it rot in the ground. So I don't get no straw for the cattle. You don't get nothing for your bread, for everything we make. Okay? But I can also plant bee mix which is for birds and bees. I can plant wild bird seed, which is for wild birds. I can also be paid to buy a ton of wild bird seed like anybody puts in their garden for the birds and drew it out on the ground. Once a week, I can get paid for that. Now my accountant says, do it. Because in doing that, I've not got to buy fertilizer which since the Ukraine war, it's gone from 250 pounds an acre to a th uh, ton, sorry, to a thousand pounds a ton. So in order to fertilize your food, I've got to buy fertilizer at a thousand pounds a ton. It's come down a little bit in some times and it goes up a little bit, but that's basically where we are. So I've now got a crop that I don't have to spray. I don't have to send nobody out there with a tractor. I don't have to fertilize it, but I can just leave it in the ground and let it roll pick up my 440 pounds an acre and go all over it again and the government is giving me two and a half thousand pounds for the next three years to do that the level of control from them is pathetic and if all farmers were to adhere to this globally i mean it wouldn't be long before there's a food crisis and the worst famine to ever exist and that's exactly what their plan is in my eyes david it was my understanding that i was not going to be managed what gave you that idea it was my understanding Look, at the end of the day, creature or not, if you're a true fisherman, get your rod out and swipe that line out and hope for the best. Wait a minute, what? 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 Oh, I'm gonna break it down. I'm about to blow your mind with the information about Blackstone, so stay till the very end. This is freaking me out! It's almost funny how much I'm getting banned right now, so just look at my pinned videos. Both pinned videos have a ton of views. The one that does not have any views is the one you should watch because that's what they're trying to keep from you. That's my hint. Now let's get to the Blackstone information. Blackstone beats genetic privacy suit 
over ancestry acquisition. So Blackstone now owns all the genetic information you send to them. If you ever were like, I want to find out where I'm from, ancestry.com. Blackstone Incorporated defeated a proposal, class action, alleging that it's $4.7 billion acquisition of ancestry.com. $4.7 billion to own your DNA. Sounds like a deal to me. Uh, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit said Monday that plaintiffs Carolyn Bridges and Raymond Cunningham, good for them, by the way, that they even did this lawsuit. They just didn't have enough information. The court affirmed a lower court's dismissal of the lawsuit for failure to state a claim. That just means you got a bad lawyer or you're not really doing it right. But just in case you guys gave your DNA away because you wanted to know if your ancestors were from Britain or Ireland, they own you now. And with this awesome genetic manipulation called the <laughs> mRNA, you don't think that that all kind of comes together right now over you? When you see something like Ancestry.com being bought over by a company like Blackstone, it's probably not going to be good news. And I know some of you will be thinking, well, at least it's not BlackRock, but BlackRock and Blackstone used to be under the same company that was founded back in 1985. It was called Blackstone Financial Management back then. But the bigger shareholders now for Blackstone is Vanguard and BlackRock. So you can probably imagine the extent of how bad this might be. The reality you perceive is but a carefully crafted illusion. Let me explain. Behind the polished facades of your nightly news, the world's media is a puppet controlled by a select few for their own agenda. These are your hidden masters, manipulating the flow of information, shaping your thoughts, beliefs, and perceptions to serve their own insidious purposes. They dictate the narratives, manufacture consent, incite division, and cultivate ignorance. But even in the face of such overwhelming control, sparks of defiance flickers. Independent voices rise in the wilderness, speaking truths that the powerful seek to silence. The time has come to break the chains of media manipulation, to reclaim the freedom of thought and speech that is our birthright. Rise and let the light of truth shatter the darkness of deceit, peace, love and unity. So many people have woken up over the past four years alone, but in your honest opinion, can you see a mass awakening to the point where people are going to be rising up and standing up and taking back what's ours? Let me know in the comments below. Do you remember what I was saying about them getting the foot in the door? Just putting that wedge in and just letting you know they're in the background ready to fucking change our lives forever. Well, here we go. Lab grown me. First fucking country in the world to introduce it. Check this out. Would you eat that? Would you really fucking eat that? The only thing that I can suggest is when it comes into the shops, whoever fucking stocks it, boy, you can't. Just don't fucking go anywhere near them because they're part of the system. They're the ones that want to change our lives forever. Lab grown me, where the fuck do we go from here? It was bad enough years ago when they fucked around with our fruit and veg. Nobody wanted to touch that, but here we are. It's part of the system and people fucking deal with it now. We've got apples that are covered in fucking wax. This new chemical, I can't remember the name of it, that Bill Gates has covered all our fucking veg with. Is it a peel? And if the rumours are right, that's a carcinogen. Apparently Asda's stocking it and others are going to follow suit. It needs to be nipped in the fucking bud now. Our water's shit. Our food is already fucking shite anyway. Now we're talking about lab-grown meat. And we're going to be the fucking guinea pigs of the world for it. Say no, people. If we go into our local supermarkets and we see it, we should fill our fucking baskets with it and just leave it down end the aisle. Or fill our baskets with it and just push it out the fucking door. Leave it in corner at car park. This is also confirmation that they really are trying to fuck things up for the farmers. Lab grown meat. Was a conspiracy, now a reality. Another one that's joining the fucking list. Let me know your thoughts. Would you eat it? Over here in the UK and Ireland, we've seen quite a few people protest in the middle of supermarkets because of certain produce coming from certain countries. So we're very curious to see that once the fake meat hits the shelves, what their reactions are going to be and if there's going to be any protesting in relation to that. This 28-year-old woman is on her way to meet a guy who she will recognise instantly, though she doesn't really know him. They used to be total strangers. You have my brother's face. 
In March of 2012, an incredible surgery was performed on 37-year-old Richard Norris. Norris had spent the last 15 years essentially living in hiding as a recluse due to the fact that his face shocked and disturbed the public. Norris had been involved in a pew-pew accident in 1997 that took away his upper and lower jaw, lips, and nose. All hope seemed to be lost for him until the family of 21-year-old Joshua Aversano was found. Joshua had been unalived in a tragic car accident, and his family had been approached by doctors working with Richard Norris to ask if they would be willing to donate their son's face to Norris being that both of the men's faces originally somewhat resembled each other, and the family agreed. So in 2015, the sister of Joshua came face to face finally with the man who now wears her brother's face. And she did, she reached up and kind of brushed his forehead and could only say, wow. Seconds later, she added, this is the face that I grew up with. His nose, his lips, his teeth, his jawbone, I mean his hair, everything belonged to my brother. How would you feel if you met someone who now had one of your relative's faces? And what would you even say to them? I said, listen, I've tried to see a face and I can't see a face anymore. You're nothing but a two-faced hypocrite is what you are. But imagine you going on like a blind date and you're sitting on this chair at the table waiting for this lady and then she comes in, she sits down, she stares at you and you're staring at the face of your ma or your sister, or something weird like that. It just wouldn't sit right like that. No way is that and I'm gonna a real... pull out. Are you joking? Is that really a brain? It is a real preserved human brain. There it is. Frontal lobe, frontal lobe, occipital lobe, vision, occipital lobe back there. And in this brain, I don't know if you can see it from there, if I pull apart, the two hemispheres, you can see how deep the the folds of the brain, the surface is folded in that deep into the brain, which expands the surface area of the outside of the cortex. The rat cortex is flat. There's no folds. Humans and elephants and dolphins have lots of folds. They have much higher capacity for computation because of the folds that you see in this brain. It's smaller than I was expecting. Really? Half the people say it's smaller, half the people say, wow, that's, that's enormous. Interesting. Is that the, the color of a brain? The color of the brain is darker than the real brain if we opened up my head right now um, because of the formaldehyde, the, the preservative chemical that this has been sitting in for at least 26 years. This brain has been in my department for ever since I got here 26 years ago. I feel like I probably should hold it. I think you should hold it. Oh my god. It's wet. Yes. So, I mean, that, that has, that defined this person's whole life. How they saw, felt, smelled, uh, heard and thought about the world. Just right there in your one hand, in your right hand. It's crazy to think that this little thing is, oh, it's different underneath. Yes. It's crazy to think that this little thing, this little. That's the start of the spinal cord right there oh, okay. that you pointed at. And this stuff at the underneath at the back. Is that like... is the cerebellum, a uh, brain structure critical for fine motor movement. Um, so we wouldn't be able to walk smoothly if you have damage in your cerebellum. Isn't it interesting that like everything, as you say, everything this person worried about, every thought, every memory, every relationship, all of their education, the school they went to, the university, everything they saw and remembered and all of their trauma yep. and their anxiety and maybe their depression, Everything they went through, even their last days before they died, is like captured in this little ball of like tofu yep. that sits in my hand, an entire human being's existence. It's true. 
what they watched on TV, their favorite movie, their favorite number, color, everything is in this <laughs> tiny little ball of tofu. This man's holding a wet slippery brain and all he can think about is a ball of tofu. Oh my God. It's wet. Yes. Oh, hello you, you little wet ball of tofu. I can't wait to have you later on. Yes. Yummy, 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 I got brain in my belly and I can't wait to eat some more. Yum. You were born in a cold prison. It is your country, your state. Number two, you have to pay for the prison stay. They call the prison fee Texas. Number three, you have no say what will be done with the money. But you have to pay. Number four, to pay the money, you have to work. The prison encourages you to buy new shiny products so you feel better about your poor existence. Number five, you are not allowed to exit the prison far enough to see the prison wall. Number seven, the prison gives you news and entertainment so that you don't discover the prison walls. Number eight, the prison does not allow strong family bonds or strong brotherhood unless you are a part of the group that is running the prison. Number nine, the prison you live in wants you weak, sick and divided because weak prisoners can't climb the walls. And most important, number 10, the prison is mostly run by other prisoners. It will collapse if enough prisoners will wake up. This man got almost everything down to a T. I mean, I love this clip, but number 10, I would love nothing more than everyone to stand up and take back what was ours and just make the world a better place. They're not aliens. They've always been here. There are forces that are not human, that do exist in a spiritual realm of some kind that we cannot see. And that when you think about it, sort of make you think we live in an ant farm. That is real, yeah. okay? The thing that struck me most about the interview is that Carlson is saying, um, I, I kind of got what's going on and I don't want to know any more. And I've actually stopped gathering string on, as we say in reporting, stopped gathering string on this, gathering information because of I'm satisfied that I know enough and I don't really want to know that much more. Excuse me, you're a bloody journalist. You're supposed to be now an alternative journalist. Of course you want to know. What's the first thing, if you were a proper journalist and you came across this information, what's the first thing you'd do? You'd look at who's been saying this, uh, in my case, since the 1990s, and you'd say, hey, you, you come on my show with its massive audience. It's, tell us what you found. What, what's your view of what's going on? You, that's what you do. But it doesn't happen, as it doesn't happen with, uh, with, with, with Rogan either. There has to be a reason for that. One of the things that I've been pointing out over the decades is how if you look at religions and if you look at ancient cultures and, and, and tribal legends and accounts, there is an absolute common theme between them. Yep. And that is that a non-human force operating from the hidden is manipulating human society. It's a, a very compelling coordinated agreement between what is otherwise um, a disparate group of yeah. different groups and beliefs. Carlson, in this uh, interview, is acknowledging that. It would be nice, actually, if any of them, any of them that speak about this in a mild way, acknowledge the guy who's been saying this since 1996 and taken untold shit and abuse and ridicule for saying it. If you were a reputable journalist, I said that too fast. If you were a reputable journalist and you knew of non-human forces at play, would you not rather go and spill the beans out whenever you attend podcasts or shows and get as much truth out as possible? And would you also not want to investigate things further so you can see if there's any patterns or anything else? Watch this. That this is why you have to be so called called by real witches. witches of New Orleans saying you're playing with fire and you got to change up your chance. It's true. So in season one, when I was the writer's assistant, I wrote the chance. And I would go online and like look up spells. 
was like, why not? And then I'd like change a couple of words. I'd go into, I'd, I'd, I'd like figure out a spell. And then like go and change a couple of words to French and a couple of words to like Creole, a couple of words to like Haitian Creole. Or you can do Google yeah, Translate. Like, like, difficult. You do Google yeah. Translate to Haitian Creole. And then I'd like throw some Latin in. And I was like, I was just like making some spells. And then we got a call from a woman in New Orleans who was like, I think that you're playing with fire. I think that you're, you know, you know, what are you trying to do? You're putting these spells in everybody's living room all across America. Like we were like the person And then um, I started making shit up a little weirder. <laughs> After that, she said they started making things a little weirder. So these people in these shows are casting actual spells on the viewers and people are broadcasting it into their homes. Your eyes and your ears are gates. So they're literally putting curses into people's homes based on just them watching and streaming the show into their homes. Follow me if you want to learn more. This shows that even those of us who are Christians have to be very mindful of what we allow to be washed within our households because we just don't know what we're letting in. But your 100 degrees is better than 32. It's your time to shine. So hot in Arizona that it's literally melting plastic. I left this in here for like... It's 105 degrees outside, right? And I go to grab my sandals and look. They melted. They melted. I'm out, I don't know. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. I, both get, I know, but I gotta get you a new one. Like, it's melted. I'm sorry, moms. I live in the hottest fucking state that it melted the little Joe. Oh my God, it's hot. What? <gasps> oh no! Babe. <laughs> Let me see the bottom name. <laughs> what the hell? I've never heard of or seen hot weather come to the point where it's melting tail lights and melting slippers onto roads. I mean, I don't know how you're dealing with the weather over there, hi. You're okay. Are you okay? You've been hit by, you've been struck by a smooth coming home. Are you okay? Will you dance? Are you okay? <laughs> What the hell? Monty, no, honey. <laughs> no! That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the compilation. And if you did, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe button. I'll see you all again on Wednesday. But till then, look after yourselves, stay safe and stay strong. And I'll see you then.